We're back out here at the Boss Coin Mining Farm. This is the immersion shed. We have so many systems in here, and today we're gonna to be zooming in on the DCX BitPod. It's a two miner immersion Bitcoin and other crypto mining rig solution. With that unit, you can liquid cool your miners. You may notice the fan on mine is not spinning. Well, this is the one year review and update. Today's video is not really to compare all these different models we have out here. I will contrast the some within its own lineup, the DCX ICP40 or simply their eight miner immersion unit. Speaking of mining, I may be building my own mining farm, but if you don't feel like doing that, check out Revolution Mining where you can buy miners with them and they will run them for you. Link out in the video description below. And thanks to them for making today's video possible. But yes, I'm thankful to have essentially every immersion mining system that can be deployed in a small to medium scale option. And all of these companies make large industrial grade solutions as well. Uh, so liquid cooling is really cool, right? You know, why would I do that? There's over $40 million in Bitcoin mined every day. It's a trillion dollar asset. It can be an incredible way to earn passive income, okay? Uh, but what really stands out is mining quietly, mining efficiently, having the ability to overclock your miners. Welcome to the immersion mining shed. Remember that immersion systems will radiate heat and when you put this many immersion systems in essentially one shed this is a 10 by 24 shed uh, you need to get some airflow flowing so this is the bit pod over here we installed it we couldn't get it to hold the pressure that it was supposed to we tried redoing it but just never really got it to hold however it still ran fine with two bitmain amp miner s19k pros and those were Bitcoin mining rigs consuming around 3,000 watts of electricity each. An average S19 will buy Bitcoin consuming about 3,000 watts. I had those down clock sums, so I was consuming 5,000 watts or less um, of those two miners. The coolest configuration with the BitPod though, is that you can actually run four watts miners in it if you orient them correctly and the dry cooler, if it has proper pressure, is supposed to be able to cool that. And to be honest, I think that it could. Because when we look at the DCX 8 minor unit, the dry cooler, which is basically like a radiator that's running, uh, it's actually a water coolant mixture through it, pushing air over it, which is cooling it much like a car radiator, right? That's running essentially against the heat exchanger that is cooling the immersion fluid. The immersion oil never leaves the tubs in the DCX units. And that's the same with the Bixbit immersion mining systems, which are these uh, containers here uh, behind me, right, right there. The fall caching units, uh, they actually, the smaller scale ones, I think it's up to 96 miners, which is not small at all at that point, actually run the immersion fluid through their dry coolers instead of using a coolant mixture. Pros and cons to both. In a small scale deployment, I actually prefer running the immersion fluid through it uh, because it makes the setup much easier. And that brings me to my next point with the DCX BitPod. They've released a new tub for the BitPod. I'll talk about my gripes with this version of the tub. I don't know if they're still manufacturing this tub if they, or if they're moving uh, completely to the new tub, which uh, they actually sent us one to essentially heat our pool with, which I'll talk, I'll talk more about that later, but let's, let's try to keep it streamlined, okay? Uh, so I, what I really don't like about this unit, it takes a lot of fluid to fill that tub up. And you'll do literally all of the same work as you would to deploy the eight miner unit. So I would rather spend a little bit more and have the ability to immersion mine with eight full-size, or at least previous generation full-size Bitcoin miners like the S19s, or I could run probably four, maybe six, probably not. And I don't know if it's tall enough, you know, send them a message or whatever, check with them. S21 XPs, you know, basically these behemoth current generation Bitcoin miners. But the point is, right, I could put two Bitcoin miners in there. I could put eight potentially Bitcoin miners in there. I could also use smaller current generation Bitcoin miners like this 20 plus or something. 
uh, but I'm starting to you know, get really into the weeds. You also don't get a PDU with the little one and you normally will get a PDU with the bigger unit. I didn't wire up the PDU because I already had these circuits in here, but that's a huge value add. If you wanna get a full-size PDU that can handle uh, the amperage to run eight miners, okay, it's very expensive. Like off the shelf with the current distribution options, it's a 500 to $1,000 value. So on these PDUs, so these are the mining PDUs from Altair. Uh, I love these. These have been rock solid in my farm for a long time. And again, I already had these 30 amp uh, circuits wired because I was originally gonna do air cooling in here, but switched to liquid mining halfway through the process. And uh, so I plugged those in, I run two miners off of each. Very easy, simple, and straightforward. I run the dry cooler out of a circuit over here. So you can see right now, to run the dry cooler and the pump infrastructure over here, I'm spending over 10 amps of electricity or about 2,400, almost 2,500 watts to run this system. Each miner in here is consuming around 2,200 to 2,400 uh, watts. They're all underclocked S19 mining rigs. So the immersion enclosure is essentially a ninth miner that has to run here. But I'll stop talking about the eight miner unit. We already did a one year review on that. If you wanna get the bit pod, honestly, you should just get the bigger unit, seriously. Uh, because the dry cooler, when it's running, it's not running currently, is consuming half of that power. Uh, because it's literally half the size. It's basically all from that fan draw. Uh, the pumps on the enclosures don't actually use all that much power. There's little seals that go in the top, little black rubber grommet things in the top of the bit pod. They warp really quickly and, and easily, and then you won't get a good seal there on the top. This bit pod had the biggest leak by so far uh, on our immersion mining endeavor. We also cracked the uh, block off plate to kind of get the fluid down, and that helps some. But without proper pressure here in this unit, uh, it just never was sufficient. DCX has been responsive. Uh, but when we tried to follow their advice to reseat this portion here that you can see leaking in our original install, uh, we just never got this to hold pressure. We also had a fan failure on the dry cooler. They quickly sent us out a replacement, so that was really cool support from DCX. But yeah, to be frank, I'm just really not a fan of this two minor unit. And I think that their newer model could solve a lot of my gripes with this. And maybe I just got a lemon of a dry cooler. I know that their stuff can work well. You may have saw our video where we toured a 400 plus immersion miner farm that was all DCX equipment. And overall, it's been running pretty well over there from my understanding. Uh, my eight miner unit again has been rock solid, a bit of an energy hog, right? But it's like driving a gas guzzler, uh, you know, older SUV truck around town. Runs great, a little more expensive though. Hey. Hi, Tilly. Tilly, you're on YouTube again. What are you doing on YouTube? The general rule of thumb when it comes to immersion mining is you're spending like $1,000 per machine, but that's really only with the six miner or so units. So you'll be paying a premium. And again, contact them for a quote. We did have the opportunity to get this equipment into review, which is great because otherwise I would never really want 20 different systems in here. I would pick one and streamline it. I'll make it my life a little easier and simpler. Uh, but I really appreciate the fun opportunity to review all these different equipment uh, pieces and setups. And uh, it just, it, it's fun, it's engaging, it, it's challenging. It's like a fantasy factory, but for mining. And then beyond that, we get to make these awesome videos here on YouTube. Which by the way, please subscribe to the Vosquin YouTube channel if you're liking this content at all. We're gonna keep pushing out the best content that we possibly can, always and uh, forever. But when it comes to the cost, right, on these smaller things, you're gonna be spending more towards like $2,000 per miner to get them deployed. And again, you still have all that same labor to set it up. Ideally, it should be something you're DIYing, uh, essentially probably everything except for maybe the electrical circuit. So some food for thought. I will say that I really like their immersion fluid. I like the way that it smells, which is weird, but when you deal with all this different fluid, if it's relatively pleasant smelling, that's a plus. Uh, it keeps its color very well long term. And I also really like their European five liter jugs. Uh, they're cool form factor, easy to store and uh, easy to pour compared to like a five gallon bucket pail. However, when it comes to their equipment, I really hate their hoses because they discolor clear silicone caulk, like terribly. 
you can see that one's discolored and then the hoses are discolored here if you take the hoses that any of the other manufacturers used they do not discolor hey what are you doing this is <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> are, are you mining so unfortunately due to the consistent downtime and issues I had with the Bipod, I eventually moved uh, the two miners that were in there into other immersion uh, setups. We had a couple minor failures in a different unit. I've added a couple immersion mining systems since then. So I was essentially able to generate a new spot for those uh, miners without having to clean them and put the fans back on them and send them back to air cooling because at that time I was actually out of air cooling electrical capacity as well. But with our crazy new farm expansion, which I'm so excited about, it's still working through though, uh, I basically have another usable 400 amps uh, and then another usable 200 amps and then another 600 amps. So I essentially have another 1,200 amps of single phase 240 voltage electric uh, a capacity that's going to be out here in the mining gravel pad, if you will, uh, more accessible with plug and play air cooled uh, and, and liquid cooled solutions uh, at my fingertips. So I'll essentially be able to deploy two to three times more miners than I currently have running, uh, which is going to just be crazy. And uh, I just, <laughs> I need some more capital because this electricity bill is eating me alive. So I'm not trying to come off really negative on a approximately one year review on the DCX BitPod. It just hasn't worked out for me. I'd be frustrated as a consumer having these problems. And the more things I have to mess and fix and tinker with, the further it gets away from plug and play. I know it's expensive, but I think that it would make more sense from them as, for them as a manufacturer to essentially just say, okay, you've got an issue with that dry cooler. We're gonna send you a replacement and then either arrange for shipment of theirs back or just kind of sack it, take the L and uh, you know you keep it dispose of it spare parts or whatever one thing i would have really liked to see on the dcx both of their units is a temperature monitor uh, a display for me right so at a glance i can see that it's 41 degrees celsius in the eight minor and 22 degrees celsius in the bit pod which is off that's why it's so cool and different uh, but this is something that I rigged up together just from parts off Amazon. I got a little electronics case. I got the temperature a monitor and the little probes that they come with it. I think I may have bought a different one that looked a little nicer just because you know, this is getting dunked in hot fluid that's circulating constantly. Uh, but that was a fun little hobby project, a little power supply, and I uh, wired that up. But for the price of these, they should have a display on them. For example, all of their competitors have displays that you can check the temperatures on at any times. And while these tubs don't have a display right on them, integrated uh, like a little LCD, they have VFDs. And these VFDs give you a real-time readout of the fluid temperature. And that is what controls when they spin on and off. So hey, I'm Bosker on the Bosco YouTube channel. You pretty much already got 10 seconds of tails because you came and crashed our party, which is fun and rare out here on the here out here on the farm. Um, in the immersion mining shed, just a little fun status update. You can see we're pulling 135 amps off of one of our 200 amp circuits and then 147 amps of, off our other 200 amp circuit. And then we're also pulling in an additional 73 and a half amps from the electrical service next to this, the green Voscoin shed, because we, we don't call it the other thing anymore because that's nearly gone belly up. It's really become the bit axe mining shed these days. And uh, I use the AC Infinity smart meter or gauge temperature controller, there we go. And I just had it on a constant 10 speed for a long time, but I finally set it up uh, to kick on when it hits this high temp. And then I got a little USB-C extender and I was able to run these fans. I just reused the outlet I had over there. Um, and then I ran these all together. I need to clean up the wires a little bit more, but the bottom line is that that is a ton of airflow through this building. Uh, which is nice and keeps it nice and cool in here and by reducing the heat soak that happens Everything runs cooler Everything doesn't have to work as hard and then I have less uh, heat soaking and essentially degradation on those higher temperatures uh, So more efficiency less wasted power, which is less wasted money, which is more passive income If you like passive income subscribe, I'll see you later. Taylor, what are you doing out here? 
day. <laughs> Maybe I should bring you to work more often.